Hey my dear data friends, it's Nikola from Data Mozart. In this video we are going to talk about the difference between explicit versus implicit measures in Power BI. And now I know you're thinking, wait, wait, wait Nikola, I know about measures, I know about calculated columns, I'm able to differentiate between them. But what are now implicit versus explicit measures in Power BI? Stay tuned, we are going to talk about this now. One of the most challenging concepts for new Power BI users is to understand the difference between measures and calculated columns. Or to be more specific, the concept itself is not a big issue, but the most daunting thing for Power BI rookies is to understand when to use which. Ok, you've heard about measures in Power BI and that's it. What on earth are now implicit measures or explicit? Don't panic, keep watching and I promise you that by the end of this video you will have a good understanding of those two and what are their main advantages and downsides. So first of all I know that we all like things that are automatically created for us and Power BI does pretty well in that regard. One of the things that Power BI will perform for you is creating of implicit measures. Let me just expand my table here and you will see that for example, those small sigma signs uh, next to column names. That means that uh, Power BI identified numeric fields in our data model and automatically marked them with this sigma sign. That means that these column values will be summarized when you drag them to a report visual. So let me show you how this works. Let's say that I have a table visual here and I put customer key in it. You will see that we get some uh, yeah, nonsense number here uh, in, in our table visual. Why is that? Because default summarization for our customer key column, because it's a numeric column, is sum. Okay, so I can change this here and, for example, use count and I'll see total number of customers in this table or I need to change it here also to count and you will see that we have 18,000 uh, almost 19,000 customers here I can also change this to count distinct this is the same number and basically that's what uh, implicit measure does so it automatically applies aggregation on your fields Similar can be done using, for example, product. So if I drag product key here, again, I will have sum as a default summarization, but I can use count uh, instead of it and see that I have two, uh, 2.5 thousand products in my dim product table. Now let's switch it back and use product key from our fact table, so from online sales table. And you will see that there are 12.6 million uh, product keys here. If I open this drop down menu, you will see that Power BI automatically applied count aggregation here. So, uh, looking at this picture, one can too easily conclude that there is a lot of flexibility when working with implicit measures. You can choose between a bunch of predefined aggregations, as you see here, including even fancy statistics calculations such as standard deviation, uh, variance or median and all of that with just one single click. So why should someone bother writing DAX when almost everything is already pre-baked for us? Uh, before I show you why using implicit measures can come back to haunt you, let me just shortly overview how implicit measures work with non-numeric fields in our data model. I'll go and drag full name column from customer value from customer table and here you can see that uh, full names are displayed in our table visual. If I again expand this drop down menu, menu now you can see that we can use different, uh, different aggregation types than uh, for numeric fields. So instead of using average, median, uh, stuff like that, we have first, last and count and count distinct here. 
Also, if you're using, for example, date fields, let me show you. If I put date key here, for this type, for this data type, we can choose different aggregations like earliest or latest. Fine. Now, no matter how appealing looks the possibility to save time and effort by using automatically created measures, you should try to avoid that, as it comes with some obvious downsides. Imagine, for example, that you have a non-additive or semi-additive measure, such as the unit price of the product or bank account balance. You don't want these values to be simply summed in your report, as that is not expected behavior for those measures. Therefore, it can easily happen that your report produces unexpected incorrect outcomes if implicit measures are being used. Also, another limitation of implicit measures is that if you want to use them in multiple different aggregations type, aggregation types, you have to drag one same column multiple times and then set different aggregation type for each of them. What I'm talking about, let me show you. Let's say that, for example, here, here I have count of uh, my product keys, but let's say that I want to see how many distinct products were sold. So I will drag my measure here and instead of count, I will use count distinct. And you can see that we have 2516 distinct products sold. So basically for each kind of aggregation, you will need to drag respective column into the visual. On the other hand, writing measures in an explicit way using DAX language requires more time and effort in the beginning since you need to do some manual work. But you will bear the fruits later, believe me. So back to our original challenge to display both the total number of products and total number of unique products in our report. That can be easily solved using explicit measures. So for example, I can go here and create a new measure. And first one I will call total products and it equals to count. Let's use our online sales table and product key. That's our total number of products. And let's create another one, which will be unique. Oops, sorry. unique products and it equals so this time i will use distinct count and again i will use product key from my online sales table and if i now drag those measures instead of columns so i have total products and i have unique products you see that those number match between themselves uh, so as you can notice, we use the same column as a reference to multiple different measures to produce desired outcome. While implicit measures can support some really basic scenarios, as soon as your report needs more complex calculations, you will have to switch to explicit measures. However, the main advantage of using explicit measures instead of implicit ones is their reusability. So you define measure once at one place and you can refer to it as many times as you need. Uh, the other obvious benefit of, uh, is the easier maintenance of the, of the data model. So if you create a basic explicit, uh, base explicit measure like we did, for example, for uh, count of products, you can use this measure as a reference in 20, 30, 50 other different measures. For example, uh, to calculate uh, uh, margins, uh, year over year sales, etc, etc. And if any background logic needs to be changed, you will change it at one, at only one single place in this base measure and all referring measures will automatically apply the new logic. Now, as we learn the difference between implicit and explicit measures and obvious benefits from using the explicit measures, let me wrap up with some best practices regarding uh, working with measures in your reports. First, don't forget to format your measures properly. Here you can, for example, want to maybe uh, use comma to separate uh, 
millions from thousands uh, or something like this or if you work with values related to money like sales amount for example you may want to format them as a currency always be consistent with the formatting if your numbers are limited to two decimal places then stick with it in the whole report then also once you're done with creating explicit measures based on a specific column you should hide that column in the in the report so for example this product key column is already hidden in the, in this example and uh, why am i doing this this way i will prevent uh, inappropriate usage of this column for example simple summing of product key as you saw in the or counting uh, like you saw in the in the uh, beginning stage of this video so or summing for example bank balance from the account so you as a data modeler take responsibility for summarization options To conclude, as I've already said, we all prefer to take an easier path to meet our goals. And that's completely legitimate and Power BI is your best friend when it comes to supporting you on that path. However, there are many important considerations to take into account when choosing which road to take. I don't want to say never use implicit measures. By, uh, in this video, I just wanted to point some possible pitfalls and limitations when using them and why you should still prefer writing explicit measures instead that's all folks if you enjoyed this video please click on that like button down below even better you can subscribe to data motor channel and enjoy more cool power bi and data videos